time. I mean, I told him not to go there, and if he's going to go there anyway, that's really not on me. That's Hello, and welcome to the stream. Today's pre-stream chatter was me pretending that I was talking to somebody else, but there is nobody else. My life is very empty. Okay, welcome to the stream. I think I just said that, didn't I? Um, okay, so we're still sort of looking at the API, but I, it occurred to me that I've got a lot of programs, or at least one or two, uh, that will tell you the, um, like for example, the equatorial coordinates of something, BC equator dump, uh, the, um, the ecliptic coordinates of something, and it would be nice to add something that had like the alt azimuth coordinates of something uh, over a given amount of time. And it would be nice if we could actually sort of combine those into a single program for the API and use options to decide which one we get. So we're going to do a couple of things here. We're going to uh, create a BC dump stuff, which combines the various BC dump programs. And we're going to try to use the um, double minus options uh, because we are uh, stupid. That's why. I did say we're going to do a brief audio test, so let's go ahead and F with that real quickly. I did say we're going to do a brief audio test. That was me listening to myself. Uh, okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we will. And let's just see what we... Oh. oh. I guess I used to call it um, BC Equator Dump or BC Ecliptic Dump, whatever. Um, Eclip Dump. Okay. That's cool. Uh, this time I guess we'll call it BC Dump Stuff. Um, any dump dot C, I guess. I'm already unhappy. Um, and then I guess we can uh, look at some of the other. Um, I guess we'll have to look at some of the other stuff here. Let's see where I put the. Uh, okay. Uh, dumps data about a planet, satellite, etc. Um, uh, dumps ecliptic. Equatorial, alt azimuth, data about a planet, satellite, etc., in either J2000 or J, or oops, or J of date, epoch, depending on options. So I think we've beaten that to death now. So basically, this is something that if you want to dump data on, and before I forget, um, options will be. And I probably need to write that nicer, but anyway, uh, start time in Unix seconds. Um, actually, I guess we're going to do double um, start time in Unix seconds, end time in Unix seconds, um, delta, the, um, the increment of time in seconds, not Unix seconds, obviously. Um, minus object item naif. Uh, the NAIF ID of the object for which we want data, or WAND, well, the longitude for ALTAS, and maybe for other stuff too, the latitude for ALTAS. Um, in theory, even the right ascension and declination for the moon can vary based on your latitude and longitude, but I'm not sure I care enough about that to do anything about that. Um, and then, let's see, what else do we want? The latitude and longitude. Um, core. Um, frame. Oh, what is it? Not epoch, not frame. It is the frame, isn't it? J2000 is a... It is a frame. Um... Um, Eclipse 2000, Eclipse date, alt as. Okay, so we're in good shape now. So I guess the first thing we're going to do is, well, the first thing we're going to do is copy all these uh, lovely um, libraries, including ones that are done incorrectly. Now let's go ahead and figure out long options, since that looks like it's going to be the, uh, uh, not necessarily the hardest part of this, but it's going to be a part of this. Um, So let's go ahead and figure out long options in C. 
It's not really that hard. I, I say that because I haven't done it yet. Um, now we do need get op.h for this one for sure. I don't think we needed it for the um, for the short options. It might be that they just it's included in C or there's some other library that I now forget about. Let's go ahead and put this up here above the um, uh, or along with the standard libraries. Okay. Da, 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 da. Okay. Okay, so what this looks like here, yeah, while one, what? So do this forever? Um, okay, It'd be nice to know what the hell this did. Um, curious if some of this is occurring because you now this is HTML and for some reason they decided that they were going to even uh, decorate their code because they're idiots oh, and this is GNU too wouldn't expect that of them okay so let's go ahead and copy this I get why are we declaring a structure every time Uh, I'm not happy with this. Let's take another. Let's find something else that does this. Let's let's find another. Um, yeah. Ooh. Already we're in bad shape here. We have two different things. One is called get opt, and the other is called uh, unsted. Uh, but I guess they're kind of the same, right? Uh, let's see, get up long, int org c, something, 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 okay. Um, show me an example. Aha! An array of struct opt declared in get opt as, okay, so we need a bunch of these suckers. Wait, that doesn't look too bad, actually. Um, I don't know how to create a... a a struct. I guess I guess you could just say option. Well, we'll find out. Um, flag. Let's see. Ooh, shiny. Okay. Let's. Well, let's go ahead and look at the GNU option as well, just so we can confuse ourselves. In the GNU example. Um, I, the only thing I don't understand is why this is clearly an array of options. I'm totally okay with that. And uh, an array of structures. And that's fine. Why are we redeclaring it each time, though? That doesn't seem right. Um, why is that inside of a while one? the end of options. So what does this actually do here? Um, get up long. Rxc and Rv are the things you're sending in, which is cool. Oh. So this apparently... Okay, so this has to be a long... Option index has to be a pointer to an integer. I guess this is the confusing... Um, this is the confusing argument here. What does this have to be? And if you already have a structure of long opts, uh, why does it matter? Um, so that that is the third argument is the, the Jesus Christ. Um, if this option set a flag, do nothing else now. Okay, 
This is insanely complicated. Let's see what get up long takes as its arguments. Um, okay. So the magic here, oh, this is get opt. Get opt long, opt string. And so is the opt string the same thing as it is here? Basically, um, except it also accepts long options started with two dashes. Um, opt string should be specified as the empty string, aha. Um, okay, so that might that might be easier for us. We don't need it to accept. Um, okay, so now I think I understand this. So get opt long only. Wait, how is that? Um, Get opt long only. Is that the same thing as just saying get opt long with um, accepted accepts long sort of accepts only the opt strong should be specified as the empty string not null. But um, oh, so I I don't think I think a lot of this is pedantic stuff we don't need. So we'll say get opt long. Okay. Well, we probably should create a main method first. Always useful. Okay. So what we want here is get opt long. Why isn't this? This should be. Um, am I not? I would expect to get indentation there, but don't worry about it for now. Um, get opt long. And that's just argc and argv. And then the empty string. And then the array of structures. Uh, the. Uh, the concept structure long opts. Okay. Um, so we'll call that options. That's the array of. Oh, actually, we can't call that that, can we? Um, actually, we can. Options, which is a struct. An array of structs, in fact. And then a uh, pointer to an integer we'll call index, and which we will declare here. Something is bugging me about this. Am I, I'm missing something. It's not quite, um, it's not quite formatting correctly. But let me go ahead and try to run it in just a second. Um, I don't think we need to set it to zero because we are going to pass it as a parameter. So let's see if this even bothers to compile. Um, oh, well, that's not really that bad. I mean, that's kind of what I expected. Okay. So now let's go ahead and just copy their options for right now while we're understanding this. Static struct. Okay. Okay, so this is a option long options. So I think we just called it options. And we don't need this because we're not actually going to be... Oh, come on. What the hell? Alright. This is... This is really kind of bizarre. So do we need this? Okay. So I think we need to convert multiple spaces to a single space for one thing, and that's going to be do that with, nope, not like that. Query replace regex. Plus space with plus. Yeah, yeah, yep, 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 yep. And this we, we will be able to reformat, hopefully, into something that looks better. And, of course, that also resets one space back to itself, but that's probably not a big deal. So this is kind of what I meant to do here. And then this, this should be like this to close this off. Still not as great as I want it to be because this stuff should be indented more than the closing brace. 
but at this point, I don't care. Okay, so now let's see if this at least builds. Um, what the hell? What the hell? What the hell? What the hell? No, no, no. Okay. Um, I guess I'd better go ahead and declare this, um, just because I'm not quite ready to, um, to do my own example yet. So we do need to understand this. Um, we need, we need to understand this, what this structure does here. And I think we can probably do that. If we can get the damn thing to compile. Oh, here we are. Um, initializer element is not constant. Hmm. That's... Option zero flag. So this appears to be a problem that has nothing to do with get up. So let's just... Con static struct options equals... Uh, we're skipping the first Pomodoro, but we will do the next ones. All right, so that's what we're doing here. Um, I get the feeling we might need unisted h dot here, but let's let's see what's going on. So first, let's get rid of this to see if it, the problem. I don't think the problem has anything to do with this. The problem has everything to do with um, how just it's really a it's really a syntactical error. Initializer element is not constant. Okay, so what are we doing? Um, so I guess we're saying that an option. This this four element list here is an option. Uh, it doesn't like it because um, I I don't understand why it doesn't like it. It doesn't like it because it says, and I think we don't actually need to. Do, we could just say struct option. An array of this. See if that works. Um, wow. So we, I think it can't be static because it's inside of the main method. If we really wanted it to be static, it would have to be outside the, the main method. I th I'm just making that up. Okay, so now let's see what this does. Um, I mean, we, we still haven't gotten it to actually run. We just, we're just seeing if it's going to compile. Okay, gorgeous. I'm going to go ahead and push this to Git. Just, I don't know why, but I will. Okay. And I'm going to blow my nose, and hopefully I'm going to do it in a way that does not let you guys hear it. So I'm going to mute the stream for just a second. Okay, and if you heard that, then that's disgusting. All right, so now let's actually run the thing, now that I've backed it up. I don't think it's going to do anything. Uh, okay. okay, well, that's probably expected. So now, apparently, when you do a get up long blah, 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 well, it returns a value, and it sets index. And that's not very exciting, though, is it? But let's see what it sets those to. Um, okay. Uh, and then index. And that'll be ret and index. Let's see what this does. Ret is minus one, index... Oh, yeah, because I guess I need to give it some... That would be nice if I gave it some options, huh? Okay, so ret is 97, index is 2. That actually makes some sense here, because this is 0, 1, 2 in the array. Um, oh, so the return value apparently is the letter A. So if I do this, uh, create, I should expect to get a 
99, I think. New. No. Oh! Option create requires an argument. Okay, so that is a, um, that is letter C. Index is 5. Um, the only problem is where the hell does the value 1 get stored? That might be a, that might be kind of an issue. Um, does the option structure itself get changed? One would think not. Um, and yet one would not know. Oh, is that where the zero, maybe that gets changed or something? I realize I'm reverse engineering where I don't need to be reverse engineering. Um, so let's do this. Let's say options index. Um, this is probably not going to, this is probably not going to work. In fact, I'm not even sure how I would do this. Uh, actually, I'm sure how I would do this. It's going to be index, and then it's an array of arrays. So the the um, set the third element, which is number two, should be what I need. This is probably not going to work. Oh, it didn't even compile. Um... Subscripted value is neither array nor pointer nor vector. <laughs> well, so screw you. Um, is neither array? Oh, is this where I get to use like a dot thing? Let's see what this won't work. It might compile, but it's not going to work. Um, but argument four has typed struct option. Okay, I'm good with that. So what can I do with an option? I guess with an option, um, I guess we need to look at what a struct option is. And let's see. Uh, and again, I really don't know C or programming, so let's see. Um... Has arg flag val. Okay. So I'm setting the val here to one zero abc whatever. Uh, I'm still not quite getting this. So how do I look inside of a struct? Oh. Uh, case n. Okay. Oh, it's optarg set automatically, so am I allowed to look inside of this, um, um, oh, sorry, this isn't get opt long. Uh, let's see. Show me an example. Here we go. Okay. So we have this. And here we just said none because we don't care. Um, KC has long off. Oh, okay, so they're they're dots. Um, the the thing has four fields. Um, that are dots. So they, these would be. I guess these are you sort of have to know what the the struct looks like. And we will just copy this for ourselves. Um. Just temporarily, of course, so we know what it looks like. Okay, so now we can say options index dot name. That should be a string. Well, actually, we can tell what it is from right here. And that is a string. Uh, has org flag and val. So still not crazy about this because I. What if I want to give a, a string value? But anyway, let's just do this real quick, and then we'll 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 punch it a little bit. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, so that's this value here. Now, what if I do create equal? This is going to be not happy. Foobar. Okay, yeah, because that actually didn't do anything. All right. So now we have. 
name uh, has arg flag. Is optargs the freaking value or something? Okay. Because optargs, I know, is like a magic variable um, that gets set. I, I think it's a magic. You don't need to declare it. And I think it's going to be whatever the string value is of the of the argument. So let's see if I'm right about that. No, optargs is undefined. So the question is, how do we get the uh, argument value out of this sucker? Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. Required argument, optional argument. Um, this doesn't actually tell which of these uh, the options themselves are required, just whether they require an argument. Um, and if it's minus one, we break. Okay, so uh, option opt arg. Yeah, off by one freaking letter. So it's still a magic variable. Uh, so let's see if we can get this done. Yeah. There we go. Um, now what if I do... What if I make this the only option? Is it going to chunkle on me? Oh, nice. It will warn me ahead of time. Okay. Let me go ahead and push this because I'm pretty sure I understand this now. Um, so I think I'm getting this now. Okay. So let's go ahead and leave this example up here because I get the feeling I don't want to mess with it. But then we'll create our own. Um, okay. So I guess we're going to say, and we have these all written down here. Uh, start. Okay. If you're going to give that, you do have a, you do have a required argument. I think we can just say zero zero here, right? Because uh, we don't really care about that. Um. And so here's where I could see us sort of doing the um, the while loop. But let's let's just take a quick look at this. Oh, at this point we don't really need. Ver Why not? Do I have it declared? Oh, I have it declared for this little sucker. So we'll put that in comments. Again, we didn't have to do that. It was only a warning. But anyway. Okay. Can we do this? Okay. Nice. And I think that's that is definitely the string one two three, not the um not the numeric one two three. So I guess um Okay. So now I think we could do a um Watch this. Well, negative 1 is not equal to this. Set ret equal to Um where am I declaring ret? No. Uh -oh. Is that going to work? That that maybe is not going to work. Um That's kind of strange. Okay. I get the feeling this is not going to work. Um, because I haven't declared ret... Ooh. Not groovy. Uh, this should be fine. This should... Oh. Okay, hang on. There we go. And then this should close this off, and this will probably not even compile. 
Um, yeah. That... How did I get away with that last time, though? I mean... Forget it. Well, actually, I'm not going to forget it. I'm going to do a real quick check to see what I have. Um... Oh, hang on. Um, oh, I had int ret equals uh, get option. I could do that here and really annoy the crap out of people by declaring it each time inside of a loop. I think that'll actually work. That's the sad thing. Um, no, it doesn't. Okay, that's actually okay. Because uh, we really should be declaring it here. So let's do this. Ta-da, it makes fine. Okay. If I don't give any options, we're fine also. Um so now without doing a hideous I guess we do have to do a hideous um I guess the way they're doing it, you have to do a hideous sort of a, uh, yeah, you have to look at what the value of, um, you have to look at the return value. Okay. Um, now they're doing this bizarre, um, they're doing this bizarre case statement, and I hate case statements, but we can use it, we could use a, an if, else if here, or even just multiple ifs, because, um, technically you can't have two values for ret. Okay, um, so, okay, so now do I want to be really stupid and ugly with this? Because they are just breaking on the value of ret, which, um, oh man. I don't actually need to know what position it's in because, let's see, yeah, I don't need to know what position it's in because I can just look at the, uh, look at the string. So we could just do this. Let's just be really obnoxious, do that. And here we just say if stir comp. Well, okay, we can do this too. We can say, um, uh, let's see, char star, cur, cur opt, so just draw where the cur opt is. Um, let's see, options index name, well, okay, hang on. If stir comp start options index name, Then, by the way, we could also try to parcel this crap ourselves. I mean, it's not that hard. We don't, ha I mean, we could just use, you know, look through the arguments and we see a minus minus something equals something, do something with it. Um, so it's not like we're totally helpless without this library. So a stir comp start, actually, now I'm wondering if that's a better option. Um, if we had reg X's and I knew how to use them in C, and that would probably be a better option, but I don't. So here we could say setting start to actually let's do this. We, we're not actually going to set it. We're just going to say we're going to set it. Um, and the percent s is going to be opt arc. And I guess if we're going to be all smarty pants about it, uh, we do need to set the default values. Um, now there is a Unix. Um, actually, I don't know if you can do that. Wow. Um, There is a unit. There is a C function that returns the current time. It might just be time, uh, in in seconds. 
Um, let's close off this loop. Don't think we need to do this and this. Um, and double start. And it's going to warn me that I'm not using it, but I think I'm okay with that. Um, okay, that doesn't actually break it. Whoa, okay, BC. That's not cool. Um, I guess we could do this. Uh, options, index, and I get the feeling that I'm doing the stir comp the reverse way. It's actually going to be equal to zero when the two things are equal, because otherwise, um, because otherwise it's going to be greater than or less than. But let's do this. Pomodoro time, back in two and two, and I really need it this time. And we're almost back. And we're back. So let's see what this does. Okay, so it does print out start. Let me make sure that stir comp is the correct function, even for string equality. Um, Mem comp, Jesus Christ. I think that's fine. So the weird thing here is it's going to be if not stir comp, we do this. I kind of need to figure out a way to just make one of them at a time, huh? Booyah. Okay, but now we need to set a default value, and I'm pretty sure that's just the time function. New. Now watch, I'm going to be clever here. Stir comp is in section 3 of the manual, which means the C commands are in section 3, which means this... Oh great, it gives us a structure. Um... Why? Why, 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 why can't we just have a simple time function? Um, ask time, clock. There should be one that just returns as an integer. Oh god, that's much worse. Um, that should just return. What does clock return? Nope. 
Is it? It's not C time. That C time is a. Uh, I thought C time was a property of a file. GM time might be what we want. No. Come on, you've got to give me a function that just gives me the freaking time. Is it U time? No, U time I think counts something. Jesus Christ. So really, we can no longer get... Um... We can no longer get just the time by itself is a simple function. <sighs> oh, actually maybe we can. Yeah, okay, so that might... But I don't like it it's the structure is time t instead of integer, which is what it should be. But... Um... That's what that does. Um, okay, I think for that I just need to do an include time.h. That's not a huge deal. C is an ugly freaking language, and it reminds you every single time that it is. Okay, now I've got to know what the hell, what happens if you do give an argument to time? Um... Oh, it lets you store the value, and of course we don't want that. I don't even know why they have that. But apparently... We do have to do that. Yay, it compiled! I don't know why I'm checking it. If it's not right, it's not right. I'm just screwed. All right, cool deal. So now we have the... Um, I don't know if you can do a declaration like this. This kind of worries me. Let me see if this works. I mean, it is the correct number, but I'm not sure if you can initialize something uh, to, a, to a non... to a functional value. Unused variables. Well, that's fine. Um, corrupt and we can get rid of corrupt and return actually. Um, so, are we going to do this? Uh, I was going to say gingham style. Uh, are we going to do this horizon style? Where we just give the positions for the next 10 days. I mean, that's an option. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so end is going to be... I mean, end could be just start plus something. Um, delta is equal to 3600. Um, ID is equal to, I guess... No, I can't make it the Earth. Um, let's make it the moon. Uh, longitude is zero, latitude is zero, and then uh, we can set this equal to J2000, and okay. Actually, I'm not sure I want to print stuff now. Let's just do start equals... It's A to F, I'm almost sure. It is A to F, isn't it? I hate my life. Yep, A to F. Of optarg. Else if... And if the case statement was written a little bit better, honestly, I would use it. End options index name... End equal a to f of darg, and somewhere here we're going to need a we're going to need a catch all else which says hey you can't do that. Um, okay, and if 
this actually ends up working. Actually, I want to do maybe one other thing before I do this. Um. Well, actually, right now, there's no way to set end, but that's okay. Let's just see if this still compiles and works. Yeah, something's wrong. Did I say long minus zero by accident? If I did... Ooh. Request for member name in something not a structure or a union. Okay, so, um, I think the problem here is that, let's see, while negative one is not equal to that, um, hmm, wait, that shouldn't have done that. Wait, 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 wait. Yes, this is brilliant. I meant options index dot name. One more time. I'm losing my freaking mind. Like I said, I'm really tempted to copy options index dot name to a to another string to make this easier, but it's not necessary. Oh man. Okay, unused variable, unused variable, but is it, it does compile. So if I do this, nothing happens. Okay, segmentation fault, that's actually not good either. Um, does this end the main, yeah it does, okay, so let's, this should end the while loop, yeah. Um, so here, we should be able to print all the variables whether they were defined automatically or via um, via an option. Um, we'll do it this way because it's it's kind of cool. And n equals percent f, and delta equals percent f, and id that's going to be a, an integer, and long equals percent f and lat equals percent f and frame equal or farm equals percent s all this with a new line that's going to be a start end isn't this nice um delta id long lat frame um and i think we're going to insist that lat and long be in degrees so we probably need to make a note here to convert them into radians Um, before use. Okay. All right. Let's see what this does. If this does work, I promise. I promised last time I'm going to push to get though. Um. Start. And delta. Ooh. Did I f that up? I did f that up because delta is an int. No, not delta, sorry, id is an int. I think that's the only one that's an int. Well, no, I mean frame is a, is a, um, is a string, but we already took care of that. Whew, nice. Now, if that's 10 days from today, I will be, even though it's exactly the way I planned it, I will still be impressed. Uh, yeah, pretty much. 10 days from today. Now, I'm tempted to make start, end, and delta all be integers, because there's no need to have the extra zeros out there. Latitude and longitude, we really do have to um, allow to be um, floating point numbers. But let's just leave this 
this is not a huge deal here. Okay, so we have all this good stuff going on here. Um, that's, this is obviously more than we need. And if you do give it, you have to delta it. Pretty much it for any of these, if you're going to have to give it, uh, you have to give... Um, you do have to give an argument. I'm curious as to whether we need the zero, 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 zero. I'm gonna... Such an asshole. I'm gonna get rid of it and see if that breaks anything. I wonder if that's the thing that gives you the minus one, ultimately. Um, I didn't push this, did I? Ha ha ha. I'm a freaking moron. Okay. Nice. I should be able to set the delta without having to set anything else. Ooh. Something is quite wrong. Okay, hang on. I'm going to go ahead and push this because it's working well enough. I have to push. Not well enough to actually work, though. So why, where did I mess up with delta? Okay, that's a pretty early failure for us there. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Oh, yeah. I think maybe it'd be useful if we actually had all of our LSIFs in here. Uh, so let's go ahead and move this out of the way. I think we can just do a bunch of these, but let me just do one more to make sure. Um... If we could use hashes here, this would be so much easier. Um, because we would just not even set variable names. We would just set it's the hash value of the variable. Um, but we can't, because this is C. OK, so let's see if that works. And if that works, let me make sure I saved it. Yep. If that works, I will feel confident that um, there we go. So now we just need to basically copy this and a, a bajillion times. Um, very ugly programming in C. Very ugly. Where is my list of options that I'm allowed to be using people to use? Start, end, delta. We already did delta. Uh, ID, and this one is A to I. Um, long. It would be nice if I actually put down what it actually said. I ID. Uh, long. Long. A to F. It's the lat. We set lat. A to F. Gotta be careful with this next one. Um, if it's frame. Uh, this time we need to actually do a stir copy. Uh, Optarg into in theory I could just do a pointer, but that's really dangerous in case I ever reassign um, frame. In case I ever reassign Optarg to frame. And now, just to be obnoxious, we will do this. Ta-da! Now let's watch this totally fail. Wow, compiled without errors, always a bad sign. Um, so if I just do it like this, it'll still give me something. Okay, what if I do... Aha! That didn't work. Am I doing my stir copy in the wrong direction? Well, let's find out. Destination source. So 
that. By the way, all of this is before we've actually gotten to the start of any programming. So that, that's the fascinating thing about all this. Is we've not really... Okay, there it is, J-clip date. Okay. Um... Um, I think I'm going to say um a few more times. So basically what we're going to do now is we're going to go from, um, we're going to do a for loop. And... I'm going to just be stupid for a while. Okay, I think we're ready to do this. Oh, now I'm going to... Okay, I just pushed, but I'm very paranoid. Uh, now we're ready to actually write the program. Pomodoro time, back in two and two.
Okay, we are almost back. There was a small issue which delayed me. Um, which unfortunately is going to delay me another second or so. Okay. Alrighty. Um, and we're back. Okay, so I think we're now at the point where... Um, okay, my git never pushes correctly to uh, SourceForge, but I think SourceForge has actually stopped... Um, has actually stopped allowing for git, git pushes, so that's probably not a bad thing. Okay. So now... Um... Should I? Okay, I'll do... I guess I'm going to do this just because I'm obnoxious. Um, okay. This is obviously not the final uh, thing that we're going to print. But this just makes sure, you know, step by step. Mm. Let's see what that does, and then we're going to get into this, I think, maybe. Maybe not. You never know with me. Now, if I did this correctly and I didn't bother to set anything except the frame, there should be about 240 lines here, roughly speaking. Yeah, that's about right. And they're going to go from today to about 10 days from right now. It's... That's... Yeah, okay, that's actually two more hours. That'll be fine. Okay, now if I do a delta equals 60, it'll be a lot more, if this works. And it is a lot more. That 2400, nope. Uh, oh, that's per minute, isn't it? That's a lot of freaking minutes. Uh, let's see if we can figure it out before it comes to an end. 10 days is 14,400 minutes, so this should end at about 14,400, roughly speaking. And it did. Oh yeah. Okay. So now we actually want to make some calculations. Oh, one other thing I want to do is I want to print the date. Um, okay. It'd be really cool to print the date in a format that someone could actually read it. Um, in addition to the Unix date, but we also need the ephemeris date. So that might be too, too many things to be printing. But let's take a look at it. Okay. Um, the ephemeris time, which is the only thing that uh, Spice really understands, is un et nope Unix to et of i. Um, I'm going to try to put in a nice print time here. That I mean, aside from the Unix time, because uh, I know I've done this before and I've done it in what I call star date format. Um, so let me see if I can. Oh, we're still connected. Cool. Um, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, let's see. Oh, motherfucker. I actually have a function for that? Okay, well, that's kind of strange, actually. I will be damned. Um, okay, um, so let's... Oh, yeah, if I'm going to do this, it's not going to be really, uh, it's, this is not going to be a JSON format then. Um, unless we do this. Um, oh, actually, um, yeah, we don't need, we don't need anything there. Um. So the format here can be ephemeris unix star date and I guess the other two parameters are going to depend on uh last two fields depend on Uh, what is being requested? Um, so I think for J two for um, 
J2000 coordinates, it'll be right ascension declination. For alt azimuth, it'll obviously be alt azimuth. Um, for ecliptic coordinates, I'm not really sure what to return. I mean, oh, I guess ecliptic longitude and ecliptic latitude would be the correct phrasing there. Okay, but let's go ahead and get these suckers in there. So this is just going to be... Um, We do need to keep ET as a separate variable, so we will just say um, percent %f, percent %f, percent %s, and that'll be uh, ET, I, and star date of ET. Um, and I guess that is, that is using their own functionality, so it's actually pretty cool. So let's do this one more time. And again, we're wasting time like crazy. And this time I'm not going to reset the delta. Let's just do this. Um, and I know it's wrong because we've d done this before any, many, many times. Uh, so we do not need the kernels until here. We do not need the... Let's go ahead and load the kernels here. And... It's like max kern or something that I want. There we are. Furnish the kernels. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see what that does. That should fix it. Okay. This is... Technically correct, a little bit ugly because we are um, we are extending this all the way out to, and I you know we can actually fix this uh, by converting this to second. This one we do need to be all the way out because it does give important information. But okay, this is actually not too bad. Format equals this. Um, da -da 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 -da. And then we just give lines like this. Okay, so now we actually need to give our data. This, this is the part where we actually do some freaking work now. All right. Um, so here is where we actually get... Uh, let's look at all of the, the dump stuff that we have. Uh, because... Actually, let's do this. Because I'm actually sort of curious as to what... Oh, this is this one. Uh, what other things I added to allow um, sure, Mercury RA and Dexy plotting against them uh, finding conditions are met this dust dumps daily data or whatever okay so define planet and for wait no go back I have so much love to give um, so the position in this frame Um, okay. R A deck. Interesting. Um, this might actually not be great. Oh, this is actually one of the older ones. B C data dumps. Let's go ahead and go to. BC ecliptic dump, which should be a little bit nicer. Um, okay, so this is going to give us the um, converted to. Oh, that's. Okay, now the only thing here is that is actually not technically correct. No, it is technically correct. Because we're looking at it from the center of the Earth. I thought this was a. Um, if you're actually on the surface of the Earth, there's another issue, but we deal with that. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> uh, These are really ecliptic longitude and latitude? Question mark. Well, th yes, they are. Uh, but let's. Okay. So this is pretty much what we're going to be doing here. So. Let's make sure we get this right. 
Um, now the Earth angle is something I was really excited about when I was drawing some um, some charts to show how far away from the uh, Sun a given planet was. At least I think that's what Earth angle does. Let's find out. But it's not useful to us here. Great. It's beautifully how I. It's beautiful how I. Um, Oh, I guess this is the angle from, as viewed from Earth, between two planets. And it's, I only used it for the Sun. So, really not that exciting. Um, okay. And again, I don't think, yeah. All right. So let's make sure I understand how the speakeasy p function works, which if I don't really at this point, I mean I do, I just need to remember it basically. Make sure I got everything right. Easy reader, easier reader. Why is this one easier? Because it takes um, the name, but I don't want that really. Okay, so we need the target, the, um, okay, so we need the target body, which is ID, we need the time, which is ET, we need the reference frame, okay. And now I'm going to cheat a little bit and assume that frame is actually the reference frame. So this we actually need to make sure we have um, uh, Okay, so let's make sure we know. So Eclipse J2000 uh, Ekeek date, I think is the other one and Ecliptic of date, which I think might just be Eclipse date. And the only one that's really allowed is, that's not any of these is Altaz, which is totally different. So I'm not really sure why I'm including it here. Uh, let's see if we have Ikik. I'm sure we have Ikik date here somewhere. Yeah, and it should be... Um, mean Ecliptic, and e there's a better name for it, though. I'm pretty sure I just say Ecliptic here somewhere, don't I? Um, yeah, uh, I, we do have the clip date defined here somewhere. I don't know where though. Maybe they define it back in, in Spice, but anyway. So this has to be, um, I mean, in theory, this could be any other frame. Or Altaz. So Altaz is the special case. Uh, it's one case we're not going to be doing this. In fact, if we do it, let's see what happens. We'll 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 see it. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. What the hell am I? Spiky Z. Okay. Reference frame. That's the frame. Uh, aberration correction, which I think we want to be C N plus S. Yeah. Let's be really boogie about it. The observing body, because this is all coming from Earth, the planet where I live. 399, and then we need the um, the vector itself that that's the output and um, yeah so let's go ahead and do this so we need um, now declaring a vector inside of a for loop I know it's horrible but um, it's going to be double v3 okay put the results in vector and light time is light travel time which we will we, we need it but uh, we don't use it okay and then we say recrad uh, we'll take the and we don't use range either actually ra and deck Uh, range R A deck, and actually, we'd be a little bit careful because R A and deck have different meanings uh, depending on. 
excuse me, what our frame is. Okay. And this converts them. Okay, this converts them. Range array deck. We're going to go ahead and skip this Pomodoro because the last one took longer. Um, okay. And let's see. Rec Rabs and Range Rabs. Da, da. Am I missing something? Feels like I'm missing something. Um, okay. Uh, start at DT and then. Um, I guess it's going to be. Right ascension and declination, and I guess just for fun we're going to make these in, in. Oh, actually, you have to be careful here. Um, R A. Um, over pi times twelve, and then declination. I think we can just do um, degrees per radian. Okay. Do convert London. Yeah, okay. We're not doing that one yet. So I'm hesitant for some reason. But it ran, and if we run it without any coordinate, any coordinates, if we run it without anything, it should just give us the moon's position uh, over the next few. This is really ugly, but I guess I kind of expected that. Um, the moon's position over the next. 10 days in hours and degrees. So now we have, of course, tested against uh, magic. We could test it against uh, against Stellarium, but it, we actually do have horizons for this. Um, the Earth's moon. God damn it. Seriously, I tr maybe could have typed in, okay, here we are, moon, select indicated body. Um, I wonder if I could just reset everything to the default. Um, the geo center, which is this. God damn it. All right. They're, they actually tell you how to do this. Um, this should give us, there we go, geocentric. Uh, step size, we're going to change that to one hour. And I think the default settings should be fine for us. And the only, yeah, this is geocentric, so we should be fine. Okay. What the hell? Um, I did not set my start and end date correctly. There should be an option for 10 days, yeah. 10 days, one hour. And now, Viola, watch us fail. Um, oh yeah, and they also do this in uh, degrees. So let's, I think we can do a little bit better than this, though. I think we can get decimal degrees out of this if we want, so... It's actually not looking too bad, but let's go ahead and get decimal degrees out of this. Um, that is something we should be able to control with our table settings. Mostly defaults, but... Um, by the way, the opposite of this decimal here is sexagamal. Isn't that special? Hour, degrees, minutes, it should be decimal... oh! So the only two options here are hours, minutes, and degrees, or decimal degrees. Uh, there is no way of doing hours and uh, so decimal degrees. Um, and I think 
ICRF J2000. Um, well, you can't do ecliptic, huh? Okay. A little bit limited. So if we're going to do uh, degrees there, we, we have to do it here too, obviously. Uh, so we'll convert this to degrees. Now, they might also be using plus or minus or whatever a little bit differently than we are. Okay, so now we recompile and we rerun. Okay, so now let's see how it's looking. Not great. Um, hang on. Zero, zero, zero. Oh, shit. Yeah, also because I kind of didn't. Um, I didn't round to the nearest tower. Let's go ahead and round this to the nearest tower. Let's, um, uh, let's just say, what's the date at, um, so where is this? This starting uh, at midnight tomorrow, which is about an hour ago. Um, because we're in Greenwich time, it actually says up there. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this again. And the only different thing we're going to do is say time is equal to this number here. Give us a nice little test there. Start is equal to that. And then we have some very nice looking um, agreement. Maybe that's not too bad, actually. I'm not too unhappy with that. Um, 169 and then um, I mean if we really wanted to do this we could do this let's go ahead and do this we could kind of do this now the the sizes are different so it's not gonna work out a hundred percent but like 3.77 here is the seventh at 1 a.m. 3.77 here is the seventh at 1 a.m. so this is looking pretty good uh, now, what I really want, though, is ecliptical coordinates, which are harder to get. Not impossible. Um, or use the epoch of the date. So to do that, I want to use Stellarium, so I'm going to. Um, I'm sort of surprised this doesn't let me do that, though. Let's see. Angle format, display output. Here we go. No. That is not what I wanted. Okay, so what can I do here? I can get astrometric. Um, observer ecliptic. Oh yeah, here. Uh, no, what? No, I don't want the. I want the targets. Um, ecliptic latitude and longitude. Okay, hang on. Ecliptic. Please stand by. Heliocentric, oh, okay, okay, I see what you're saying. So that's from the observers, the ecliptic latitude, and then let's see if we can get something of date. Um, okay, that's something matching over here? Okay. We apparently cannot get uh, we have to use the J2000 frame. Um, I don't see a way of getting the, uh, you know, um, allowing for precession, local apparent sidereal time. Observer, uh, sub, north pole. Um, all right, well, that's not really what we want, though. Um, precession. No, not precision, precession, which tells us to uh, nutate the coordinates uh, based on, um, latitude and longitude, uh, sorry, based on the time. You don't see us? That doesn't seem to be happening. Okay, well, let's see what we get for ecliptic coordinates and if they match what we want from the program. Um, so that's RA and deck. Observer. Let's move this over a little bit. Or let's not. Um, ecliptic, longitude, and latitude. So let's see if we can um, 
So that should just be frame equals. I have no idea. J eclipse date? I don't think that's right though. I think it's just eclipse date. There we are. Um, one second here. And let's see if we're getting. Oh wow, we are. I don't know why I'm surprised. It's supposed to be like this. And um, yeah, okay. Good deal. All right, so we are getting what we want from here. The only thing we we now I'm sort of tempted to ignore the fact that we could get this from um, we could get this from. Uh, from Stellarium as well. But I'm kind of happy that we got this from here. Looks good. Um, maybe I'll do something that allows you to select which columns you want. Because um, this is kind of ugly. But anyway, it does work. I'm going to go ahead and, if I haven't already, I'm going to BC get it. I think I have, though. Nope. Made one other change, I guess, because it is still um asking me for blah 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 it still get when i did bc get it did tell me i had changes to push okay so the next thing we want to do here now is this is pretty much for everything except alt as um so which which is special enough that i'm beginning to wonder if i really want to be doing that but i think i do so let's see um, okay. So actually, if not stir comp, uh, alt as and frame, meaning they are equal. Now, fortunately, I've got a, a natural function here that does this called azimuth and altitude, which is actually pretty, pretty complicated. Uh, azimuth altitude, the target would be ID, the time is still ET, the lat and the longitude will be, um, now I sadly I did it in the order that I, I'm doing it here, which is lat long instead of long lat. Uh, so this is in degrees, so we have to do radians per degree to get it into radians. I'm almost sure that's going to be in, I, I don't do a cor correction here for that, because that would be st stupid. Um, yeah, uh, because everything in sp Spice is in a radiance. So this is this. Okay. And then the result value is called, oh shit. Really? It's a freaking pointer? Why not? I? Oh, actually, that means I'm returning an array. Uh, unfortunately, that means I need to declare an array. Um, um, I guess we'll just call it alt as. Um, two elements. So we can send that in. Um, And the cool thing is, let me make sure we got this in the right order, though. Um, uh, oh, it's actually a it's actually a three element array, one of which we're not going to end up using. But um, okay. Um, so this, we get this, we push that in there, get this, and then all we should have to do now is because we're getting, I always get the longitude first, so we would say, um, the right ascension is now equal to, um, alt as zero, declination is equal to alt as one, and if that's not the case, then we go through this little rigmarole here, 
if this works, I'll be sur but I'm getting pretty surprised a lot nowadays, so I'll still be surprised though. So now let's remake this puppy. And and let's see, frame equals alt as. This should break it. Um and I think we can test with Horizons again here, because this is a, um... Oh, I actually think we already have it. Oh, this actually depends on the location. So from the Geo Center, this is not going to work. We need to do this from an actual location. Um... Let's... There must be an observatory in New Mexico. Right here. Okay. And I'm going to be approximate here, but it's going to be very, it's going to be a good approximation. Um, that equals 35 point, I think it's 35 it's actually less than that, but 0 0.1 minus 106.5, which is pretty much where we are. Okay, the fact that it still works, I'm very impressed. Um, let's see what this does. Okay. RA deck, blah, blah, blah. Okay, this does not give us anything interesting because I didn't ask for anything interesting. Table settings. We this time we do want the um Now, apparent actually uh, does uh does correct for uh refraction. We don't want we want what is the um We want the geometric AZ and EL. What? Seriously. Um, let's just do this, see what we get. Apparent, apparent AZ and L, observer. Why can't we get geometric? Piece of crap. New settings below. All right, let's see what this is. Um, oh god, azimuth and elevation starts right here, and are we anywhere near it? Oh my god, we are. That's amazing. Okay, that number's a bit off, I'm not happy with that. Number's a bit off. This might be because of refraction, but it really shouldn't be. Alright. Now, minus 65 here, they're going to call, that's actually okay. Uh, because they are using uh, positive numbers. Uh, this is actually a little bit more off than I want it to be. This is 19, and this is... Um, of course, I did also use a slightly different latitude and longitude than they did. So, maybe not a huge deal. Okay, so it appears that we are able to do this with an Altaz frame. Um... with um, with a J2000, J clip, pretty much anything works here. This is pretty good, actually. Um, oh, and the thing we need to finish off is the format. We need to make sure the format is printed correctly. Um, so let's see. Format equals this, this, this. Now this is going to be, oh boy. I mean, in theory, I could try to print the rest of the format inside of this if loop. Um, okay. So, but I think what we can do here instead is it's start date and then it is two values, uh, which we can call... Um, 
thingy and thingy else. Um, I don't want to call them azimuth and altitude. We, we, that's what they are, actually. But uh, RA name and deck name. So that way... Hamadero time. Back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we're back. Okay, so now we need to declare RA name and deck name, but um, Oh, actually, we still don't have the, um, okay, we still need to declare them, though. And we can do that outside of here. Figure out the RA and, RA and deck names based on frame. Okay, so if not stir comp, frame, um, by the way, I could use De Morgan's Law here and replace this with a not and and, uh, I'm not going to, but I could, and I think the other one is J2000, uh, it's Ikik date, I think is what it actually is, um, And just remember, it's got to be stir copy. And this is the destination. So the destination is uh, RA deck, RA name. And in this case, that would be RA. And the deck name is well, deck. That's the easy case. Else, if uh, we have either of the ecliptic frames, which are, I think, Eclip. I hope I'm right about that. Is that a clip? It better be, right? Eclip and Eclip data, I think, are the two frames that are ecliptic. No! Is it just ecliptic? No. What is it? Eclip date, that's of the... Okay, but what is it if it's just regular ecliptic? Um... Um, Eclipse J2000, wow. Did not see that one coming. Um, Eclipse eight. then, um, the RA name will be Eclipse Longitude. Um, 
I guess it, we're only printing it once, so I guess I can say ecliptic longitude, and the declination will be ecliptic latitude. Um, and if it's alt as, uh, it's going to be azimuth. And since I'm abbreviating everything else, I need to abbreviate this too. Uh, deck name, elevation. Else, printf, um, could not convert frame to ra name deck name. And I probably should just actually end it here. I won't, just to see what happens. Well, actually I will. And we exit with an error. Alright, let's see if that works. Wow. I mean, yeah, of course it works. Okay, frame equal... Oh, no. Oh, that actually is better than saying I can't find the frame. Eclipse J2000. Okay, nice. Um... Nice. And now, if Eclipse date should be really very, very similar. Um, I didn't even look at the previous results, so I have no idea. But So this this will tell us, I mean, very roughly, of course, um, when the moon crosses the, uh, the ecliptical, uh, the ecliptic, not the ecliptical anything. So now, let's have some fun with it. Um... Wait. Oh, you don't need latitude and longitude when you're doing that. I mean, it doesn't hurt. Um, but you don't need them. It doesn't do anything. Uh, now let's go ahead and do... Um, let's look at our favorite planet, which is Mars. I mean, aside from Earth itself, of course. Oh, shit, shit, shit. No, we're fine. Start, end, equals ID, equals 49, okay, okay, okay. Uh -huh. And latitude and longitude don't matter. Eclip date. So this is... So this should be able to tell it, well, okay. Because we're dealing with Mars, we can make a delta of 3600. So this should be able to tell us when Mars crosses the ecliptic, but clearly we need... Um, and here's where it would be actually useful to be able to say end equals start plus something. Um, Let's just go to the end of this year, which is 2020. Technically, is not this, obviously, but whatever. Um, should be able to put these in any order I want. All right. So according to this... Oh, shit. It's going the wrong way. Come back, Mars. Mars should cross the ecliptic, roughly speaking, on December 2nd of this year. And the only reason we're saying that is to bring up our good friend, your mama. Well, maybe your mama, but also still area. Uh, and let's see if this is one that'll run it. Nope. I don't know why still. Okay, no. This one? This is getting bad. Well, this one obviously is going to work. Okay. And again, the slower load because of the E431. Possibly. Okay, let's find our favorite planet, Mars. We probably do not want this um, equatorial grid here, so let's go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, markings. Are we saying we did say eclipse J2000, right? So let's do the ecliptic grid of J2000. Although actually, all we need is the ecliptic itself. Although I guess it's kind of nice to confirm that this is at minus one degrees. So now. 
We think it's going to go way down, and then eventually it's going to come hit back up at... the hell is that? Oh, that's uh, an X term. It's getting crowded in here. Um... Um... Okay, I think actually we actually got rid of There we go. So it's gonna go down for a while and then on did I do uh oh I did ecliptic of date. So now this is going to be really, really pointless. Um these things are gonna be really, really no. These are gonna be so close it's probably that's interesting. That's going to drive us nuts here. Um, so this is the ecliptic of the date. Um, is here. And the ecliptic of the other thing is probably really freaking close. In fact, it might be right on top of it so we can't see the difference. Okay, so screw that. Um, let's just get the actual ecliptic of J2000 and the ecliptic of the date. And I think they're going to be so close it's not going to really matter. Yeah. So center on Mars, it's going to go down first and then up. And some, some sort of dirty joke there. Okay. And we're saying they're down... We're saying that on 11.2 it's going to cross back up. I am prepared to stop the uh, clock then. Well, I'm prepared to stop it when it actually happens. Retrograde! Oh, we said 12.02, didn't we, actually? Hopefully, otherwise we're way off. Uh, yeah, 12.02 in between 12.02 and 12.03, and this is, um, 12.04, so I think that's, that's, that's reasonable. Um, so actually, let's watch its ecliptic latitude go down. I'm, I'm sort of, I'm curious as to how, we are using, um, spice here, so we should get, okay. Damn, those numbers are close. I mean, really, really, really close. Yeah, that's going to happen at practically the same time. So 12.02 at 4.34, and we're saying 12.02 at... I think we're just going day by day, though. So, okay. Okay, so now we have a nice little program that dumps out uh, data for us. And we have... Not quite a record, but we're up to one hour forty nine minutes for this stream, close to two hours for the last stream. So we're, we're we're cranking it today. And the whole point of doing this, by the way, so we can now get an API to dump planetary positions. It doesn't even have to be planets; it could be anything. Um, I have no idea what the hell Kuton One is. I think it's a star, though, so I can't can't do that one. Um, so let's see. Let's go ahead and go back to current times. Back to today. Oh, shiny. Um, let's see where Jupiter is right now. Okay, why does it have... Does it have... Oh. Those, of course, be its moons. So what happens if we put in... The only thing we're going to ask for is the ID is Jupiter, which is 599. That's what this gives us. Okay. So it tells us the right ascension in degrees is... I wonder if we can get that in decimals. I bet we could. Um... Uh, that might be F6, actually. Nope, not F6. F2. Um...
apparently we cannot change the format of this. Um, use formatting output for, yeah, there we go. Okay, so what does this do? Does this give us what we want? No, it does not give us what we want. Um, I don't know what that actually means, though. I mean, it clearly makes it, oh, okay. So maybe there's a way to change it so it does the, the time is just the time. Tools, scripts, plugins. Um, yeah, I don't see an easy way to turn these into degrees. And if we really wanted to, we could also print these out in um, hours, minutes, and seconds, or degrees, DMS, or whatever. Uh, at some point, that becomes a little bit redundant. I mean, given that we printed out the time in three different ways, um, it's a bit much. Okay. Actually, let's see if we can Google this. Stellarium decimal coordinates. Um... This is a bug, so it's probably not what we want. Mm. GUI flag show decimal degrees. Okay. Is that actually though anywhere where we can control it? I mean, from the from from the GUI options. Um, oh, hello. Oh, no. That just searches for us somewhere. It doesn't, it doesn't change the format. Um, DSO, solution system objects, deep, but this is actually for everything. This is like for stars and stuff too. Um, surveys, no. We're done. Hello. We do, oh shit! This is gonna look for deep sky surveys to put o to overlay on something, and it's gonna take forever because there's tons of them. <coughs> I did cough into my uh, into my face. No, I coughed into my um, hand. So you are safe. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. GUI flag show decimal degrees. All right. <coughs> <coughs> I am dying of corona in case you were wondering. Let's see if I can change the config. Oh. So where can I change these? Um. So um, is it only inside of, um, okay. Let's see if there's a way here to set the uh, GUI options from within Stellarium itself, the correct way of doing things. Uh, no. Apparently there's not, or if there is, we, we are not seeing it. Um... Okay. And again, we usually I would go crazy with this, but in this case, I'm kind of in a hurry because I want to, not in a hurry, I just want to actually get it, you know. So let's go ahead and quick back this. I don't know if that's going to work here. It does not. Um, and then I'll go ahead and edit it. I will probably need to stop Stellarium for that. 
changing something's options while it's running. While doable, probably not a great idea because it would probably over... Oh, hello. Um, wow. Decimal degrees equals true. Is that the only place where we have decimal? It is. Okay. All right, let's bring up Stellarium again. And Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we're almost back. And we're back. Okay. So now, I think we wanted to look for Jupiter and see what its current coordinates are. Okay, they're still going to give this as... I think I can live with that, though. They're still going to give this as decimal hours. Oh, no, actually, hang on, they're not. This is nice. Okay. So now, does this agree with our results? It's the hell out of me. Okay. So we're saying 296.65, blah, and minus 21. Uh, that's way off unless I miss something. Oh, I said 296. Yeah, that's fine. And minus 21. Looks good. Okay. And now the one the one reason I did all of this, just <laughs> you would think that it would be for a um, a good reason, but it's not. Um. It's because I was having some issues with determining um, the um, exactly when Civil Twilight begins and ends for Barrow, Alaska. I said that very, very succinctly. Um, because they have a fairly long period of time where they go without, uh, without uh, it getting dark in the summer. Um, but I ran into some problems with that calculation uh, because it showed that the sun was, it's like twilight ends and then begins again instantly, which is clearly not correct. So what I'm going to do here is, first of all, let's go ahead and find Barrow, Alaska. Okay. And then we can do minus any dump, minus ID. 10 is the sun. Um, you want it in the alt azimuth frame. And our longitude is minus 150. By the way, notice the actual name of Barrow, of the Barrow, Alaska is... Um, wait, what? Oh, shit. Hang on. Incorrect data. I should have said Barrow dot Alaska. That's two. I made two different references there. 
So Barrow, Alaska has a longitude of minus 156, this sucker, and the latitude of 71, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's not going to happen in the next 10 days. So let's go ahead to the end of the, uh, to the end of the, ooh, let's go to the beginning of, of June. There should be more than enough time. Um, and no, shit, did I, okay, what the hell happened there? Okay. Um, right, so somewhere around, somewhere around the around May the 2nd, well, before May the 2nd, actually. So here we're down to minus 7, and I think that's the last time we're going to see minus... Nope, here it is again. Yeah, I think I might have to actually do this. Um, um, okay. It's going to be VC, Sun, Moon, Stuff. Unfortunately, I have it in the order Lat, Lawn, which we will one day fix because we will use them as auctions so you don't have to specify the order like that. Lat, Long. Unix time is this. So what this tells me is actually pretty good. It tells me that uh, the Sun Civil Twilight started at April 22nd which is a long time before uh, any of this nonsense happens. And Civil Twilight ends on August 19th. So far, so good. Uh, the problem now is if you rerun this function uh, with August 19th plus, let's give it like lots of seconds, you would now expect to see a Civil, because we just had Civil Twilight end, uh, so we would expect some Civil Twilight to be lasting for a few seconds. Um, so, but the problem is, according to this, um, pretty much at the exact same time that it goes down, it comes back up again. And so that is why we want to do... Um, stuff dump? Dump stuff. Jesus Christ. Okay, any dump, of course. Always give it a name I don't remember. Um, I think I actually, okay. So, yeah, so the only thing we need to look at here is the start and end times, which we just got from date minus D, so let's see. Wow. So basically, we want to look at what's going on around that time. So I want to say minus minus start equals, um, no, that is not the right time. OK. That is the right time. So start equals, let's go ahead and give it all the way from zero, zero, zero. Zero, zero, zero. Minus minus end equals that, but we're going to do nine, 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 nine. And the delta will be one. Let's see what happens. So this was the actual uh, concern that I had. Um, hmm. Already not looking great. Wait. What the hell? That's not correct at all. Um, did I miss up? I missed a zero there, didn't I? I did. Okay, here we go. 
So minus 5.71. Okay, I'm, I'm beginning to see what the problem might be. So this should actually have been, so somewhere in here we will hit, we will end twilight um, because the sun will drop below negative six degrees. So I'm very excited to see when that happens um, and why there is an issue with it coming back. How, how tight is this, this um, and I suspect the problem is my function that checks to see if something is increasing or decreasing maybe doesn't work well when the when the difference is zero, and it needs to be corrected for that. Um, carefully, because otherwise it will break everything. Okay, we are now nine fifty. This is um. 10,000 seconds, I'm surprised. Oh, we're actually quite a ways at, away from ending. Okay, so here we have... Booyah. At 10.06, we do have the, as we say, the... Um, we go negative. So I guess if we're going to do this, we might as well do this correctly. Uh, okay. And the sea, sun, moon stuff. Um, latitude, longitude, and the Unix time was. I mean, it's not really going to matter, but put it, make it this one. Okay. All right. So what this is saying is that we went positive. The sun went above minus six at ten oh oh six which is cool. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. That is not cool. SP minus six. That should be saying that the um, the sun's altitude is increasing, but it's not. So that might be the issue. All right, let's see what the other one says here. Maybe I got them backwards. Who knows? Maybe that's why I'm having problems with this. And then according to this, the sun um, at 11.02 a.m. Uh, becomes, um, it becomes twilight again. So I need to figure out what, maybe my P and N are backwards. Maybe that's the only problem I'm having here. Um, so here, well, this is gonna take a while actually. And then, yep, 11.02.28, yep, very good. All right, so then maybe it's just that I'm misunderstanding how, um, I tried to make it so it was un not rememberable. There was no way to not remember it. Um, Oh, okay, so it's next rise set. Where do I get the N and the P, though? I have to put that in somewhere, right? Um, S as equals azimuth 10 over RPDC. Um, oh, this is the sun's uh, azimuth and altitude. This is where the sun is located. Um, F10 um, So what is elves of high? How do I'm getting elves of high? Um, clearly it's a, it's a um, What the hell am I doing here? Oh S, P, and S, N. Um, yep, 
ETD Unix. Um, okay, where is Elves? Okay. Um, somewhere I'm doing the actual work. And what's amazing, I can't find. <laughs> I can't find where that is. I think it's going to be in the function called next riser set, but I don't know where I'm calling that. Oh, there it is. Prev or next time. Okay. Um, so now we're just calling it F. Oh, okay. So the, the, the function F should actually tell us uh, the previous or the next time something is happening. So what we're saying here is the time before now that it happens is 10.06 and the time, oh okay, okay, so it doesn't actually tell us about rising and setting, it just says the next time this happens and the, uh, the last time that it happens. So it doesn't actually tell us what direction it's going in, um, but using this we should be able to tell. Uh, because we know that it's below the horizon now, this means it went down, this means it came back up again, below the minus six degrees. Okay, I'm so glad we figured that out. Okay, uh, thank you for watching. If there's any questions or comments, well, it's too late now, isn't it? All right, thank you for watching, and I may or may not stream again someday.